All right, this is a nice x-ray diffraction question. Um, it's asking us to, to, in the first part, calculate the interplanar spacing. So let's start off like I, I always do with a sketch. Now it's not totally necessary to be as thorough with this sketch as I'm going to be, uh, but for this example, let's just do it. So the question tells us that the diffraction is occurring for the 2, 1, 1 set of planes. So just for a quick uh, sort of review of the concepts of uh, Miller indices, <coughs> let's draw that plane in. The reciprocals that created these indices are going to be 1 half, 1 and 1. So we've got an intercept here of 1 half. And that's a 2, 1, 1 plane. So there's going to be parallel sets of 2, 1, 1 planes that the uh, diffraction is occurring for. Okay, we're going to do our equation map next. This was another part of this sketch. Just really quickly, if you want to get your head in the game for x-ray diffraction, you can have some planes of atoms. with the extra radiation coming in. You can even go ahead and identify the interplanar spacing on there, the angle from Bragg's Law. So you've got your head in the game. You kind of know what we're going to be aiming towards. So the question is asking us for DHKL. We have an equation for that involves DHKL. Um, and the, the other uh, variables that are given in the question. So let's start with that. So of course that's Bragg's Law. We can just rearrange that in terms of the uh, value that we want to obtain. So we've got DHKL explicitly solved for now. It's equal to n lambda over 2 sine theta. I always like to draw a vertical line. Sorry, this is a little bit messy. Vertical line, and then we're going to look at the equation and see what do we have on the right-hand side and what don't we have. So we actually have n, the order of the reflection, and the question that gives us its first order reflection. So n equals 1. The wavelength is given, and the wavelength is 0.1659 nanometers. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that in nanometers, and we're going to get a final dimension for DHKL in nanometers as well. What else do we have? So we've got n, we've got lambda, and of course we have theta as well. Um, well, let's just do one extra step to be totally thorough here. Theta, we don't have directly. We actually have the fact that 2 theta is equal to 84.29 degrees. Because that's the angle that comes from the machine. Remember, the machine plots the extra diffraction machine this is intensity of the um, detected radiation coming out of the sample. We've got certain peaks, and the machine is just historically giving us two theta values. So we have two theta equal to 84.29. So we know theta is half of that. Okay. So the last step 
after this is just to solve. So I'm going to scrub this off. Okay, and it turns out the answer is 0 0.12 nanometers. The astute uh, viewers will notice that I actually left out a step. Uh, bad, bad Scott. The uh, step I left out, which I can just add in right now, is the dimensional analysis that I always like to do. So really quickly, we've got DHKL. As units of n is dimensionless, lambda has units of nanometers over 2 sine theta is dimensionless as well. So sure enough, we've got nanometers. And so that's included in our final answer. Always include units in your final answer. Value is useless without units. <coughs> 